We're going to do these four examples of finding the linearization of a function at a given x-coordinate. There are chapters in the description. Let's begin with a quick overview. If a function is differentiable at a point, that function is locally linear at that point, which means near the point, the function can be well approximated by its tangent line. We see that here. If we go far away from the point, the tangent line is not a very good approximation. But near the point, the tangent line is a pretty good approximation. We linearize the function by approximating it as a tangent line near a point. This is the point-slope form equation for the linearization of a function at x equals a. It's the familiar equation of a tangent line at x equals a. It's just y minus the y-coordinate, f of a, equals the slope, f prime of a, times x minus the x-coordinate, so x minus a. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Beginning with problem one, we're going to find the linearization at negative one. So we begin with y minus the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate is f of negative one. So let's just plug negative one into this function. We'll do it over here. f of negative one is equal to negative one to the power of four plus three times negative one squared. Negative one to the four is just one and three times negative one squared is just three. So this is four. So we'll just replace that y-coordinate with four. This is equal to the slope, so the derivative of the function at negative one. Let's go ahead and find the derivative so we can plug that in. F prime we can find by using the power rule. So 4x cubed plus 6x. And then evaluating this derivative at the point in question, negative one. That's going to be four times negative one cubed. Negative one cubed is negative one. So that'll be negative four. And then minus six because six times negative one. And this is negative 10. Okay, so our slope, f prime of negative 1, is negative 10. And then we just have x minus the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is negative 1. So x minus negative 1, which is the same as x plus 1. So that equation, y minus 4 and so on, is the linearization of the function at the given point. If you want to solve for y, we could do that real quick and get that y equals 4 minus 10 times x plus one. You could go further and simplify this to put it in slope intercept form, but I'm gonna stop here. You can see a picture of what's going on. This is the curve in red, and there's the linearization, that blue line. And near the point of tangency at x equals negative one, the tangent line is a pretty good approximation of the function because the function is approximately linear if we stay close to a single point. All right, let's move on to the next example, f of x equals ln x. We'll find the linearization at x equals e. So we begin with y minus the y-coordinate. f of e is ln of e. ln of e is just one because e to the power of one produces e. So this is just going to be y minus one equals the slope, so f prime of e. Let's quickly find the derivative. f prime of x, well, the derivative of the natural log of x is just one over x. So then f prime of e, our slope, is going to be one over e. So we'll replace f prime of e here in the equation with one over e. And then multiplied by x minus the x-coordinate, which is e. Again, you could simplify this how you please. I'm going to leave it in point-slope form. Here's a picture of what's going on. In red, we have ln x, and there in blue, we see the linearization, the tangent line at x equals e. So somewhere right around there, you can see near that point at x equals e, the tangent line is a pretty good approximation of the curve. If I wanted to evaluate the natural log of e plus a little bit, Instead of using the log function, I could actually just use my line to approximate that. Here's our third example, f of x equals sine x, and we'll find the linearization at pi over two. We begin with y minus the y-coordinate. Sine of x at pi over two is just one, so that's y minus one, equals the derivative at pi over two, that will be our slope. The derivative of sine x is cosine x, so at pi over two, the slope we're looking for is cosine of pi over two, which hopefully you remember your unit circle, that's gonna be zero. Cosine zero there, so the slope is just zero, and then we'll have x minus pi over two, but of course that doesn't really matter because it's gonna be 
eliminated by the zero. So this is actually just y minus one equals zero, and so y equals one, just a horizontal line. It might seem weird for our linearization of a curvy function like sine to be a horizontal line, but it makes sense when you look at the picture. There is a snapshot of sine x, and there's the linearization at pi over two. If we stay near pi over two, the linearization is a decent approximation of the sine function. Last example, we'll find the linearization of x to the four thirds at x equals eight. So we have y minus the y coordinate. What's the y coordinate? Well, f of a is equal to eight to the four thirds. You should think of this as the cube root of eight to the power of four. The cube root of eight is two, so this is two to the power of four, which is 16, so y minus 16. And then we're going to have f prime of eight for our slope, so let's find f prime. f prime we can find by using the power rule. That's gonna be four thirds times x to the power of one third, and so then we can plug eight into this. f prime of eight is equal to four thirds multiplied by the cube root of eight, which we know to be two, so this is just eight thirds. So let's go ahead and replace that slope, that derivative with eight thirds. And then this is going to get multiplied by x minus the x coordinate, which in this case is eight. And that is our linearization. Again, these are just tangent lines, but we're calling them linearizations because we can use them to approximate the function as linear if we stay near the point of tangency. Here's a picture of our last example. That in red is the original curve. And then our linearization, the tangent line in blue right there, it's tangent, of course, at x equals eight. And if we stay near x equals eight, the tangent line is a good approximation to the curve. And that's how you find the linearization of a function. In all of these examples, we could approximate the value of a function at a point near the point of linearization by plugging that value into the linearization. For example, if I wanted to approximate sine x at pi over two plus a little bit, instead of using the sine function, I could plug pi over two plus a little bit into the linearization. Of course, that's a little trivial in this example because it's a horizontal line, but the point stands. We could do a similar thing in the other problems. And indeed, if x is near pi over two, then sine x is near y equals one. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.